Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're building Twitter, and in this part of the tutorial, we're going to build a tweet detail view as well as the photo viewer. We're going to be able to open up the profile picture and replicate Twitter's um, somewhat complex uh, photo viewer. So first thing I do before uh, we start building any of this, I need to come all the way down to our content container. I need to make a button so that I can move this, this page that we're going to be building in. So I'm going to click on tweet spotty one or whatever the top layer is right here. Make a new layer. I'm going to make this full width. I'm not going to make it the full size of the tweet because uh, in Twitter, if you click on the picture, it'll open the open up the picture. I, I want to make maintain this interaction the way it should be. So I'm just going to place it over this text. Going to make it uh, transparent. Add a tap interaction to it. I'm going to name this tweet details button. Make it spell. Okay. And then we're going to be done with this, so we can just go ahead and minimize this main page. And then I need to make a new layer. This is going to be the tweet details, so we'll rename it accordingly. And it's going to be a full canvas size. This is a shell container, so we'll make it 375 width, 667 height. I'm going to pull this and drag it off to the side. So it's at 375. I can make this transparent, I'm just like that. And then I can start to place some of the assets within it. So what we're going to place is the header. There's a tweet details header in here. If you haven't put the assets in for the uh, details page and the photo page, go ahead and drop those in so that we can place these in. And then we're going to need uh, tweet details at PNG, that's our whole tweet, along with some responses. And we're also going to put in the reply bar. I'm just going to set this at a random spot right now. And then I can come back over to the layers view. So I want to make this scrollable, so I'll make another layer. That's over here, I'll drag it over. I'm going to place it directly below the header, full width, and this is going to be 514 pixels tall so that we can um, account for this reply bar, which I can then set directly below here. I can make this transparent and rename it to uh, details scroll. Okay, so now let's place this within the shell container. I'm going to place the detail scroll in first, then I can add tweet details of PNG inside of that scroll. Should probably add a scroll interaction to that, so we'll come over to our interactions panel, add that onto the details scroll, and then I can put the details header in here, and the reply bar, we'll leave that um, above the scroll as well. So now we've got this, now we need to make it uh, just to test and make sure everything's working right. We're going to make it so that this moves in. So I'm going to add two move animations. One to go in, one to go out. And before I set those, we're going to add one more uh, layer. We're going to make this a button. I'm just going to make a new layer. I'm going to put this over the back button. Make it transparent. Add a tap interaction to it and I'll call this details, details back button, just to be clear. So now we have a way to get in, a way to get out, so let's set this up. Now Twitter is using a pretty standard iOS style transition for this, so you can write this down if you were going to duplicate this or replicate this in another, another um, project you're using. I'm going to say this move in, first let's rename these. So move in is based off of the tweet details button tap. I want it to go into zero. And so the easing curve, as, as good as I can get it to match, 
is a spring with a friction of 100 and a tension of 1250. So that means it's, there's a lot of friction. If 20 is the standard and that's relatively high, um, 100 is really high. But adding this tension, it's gonna make sure it snaps really quick out. And by the time we get about here, it's going to, to slow down. It's gonna look perfect. Let's see if I tap, it bounces in just like that. Really quickly, it doesn't go past the screen, which is what we, we don't want. And then for the move out, we'll set details back button, tap, until it's moved to 375, and we're going to use the same easing curve, spring 100 and 1250. So now that moves out, oops, so it moves in and moves out. Now we also need to make this main page move out too. Uh, so you tap on that, it, it somewhat moves a few pixels. So we'll click on that. We're going to add two move animations to this one as well. Rename these, move in and move out. Actually, let's do this. Let's name this top one move out because that's what it's doing. And then move in. And so when we move out, it's going to be based off tweet details button. We're going to move it just 125 pixels left, so negative 125. Use a spring. We're going to keep the same friction, but the tension on this is lower. It's 500. We'll just leave it at that standard. And then for move in, we'll just move it back to its spot. Same details back button. Tap. Move it to zero. And now because this isn't moving um, out the entire way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the friction on this to 50 so it moves a little bit quicker. Uh, and then we, so we won't get a gap because if we leave it um, with a lower friction, we're gonna get like a weird gap. So if it's that, this will be perfect. So it moves out the way it should. It moves in perfectly. Now they're timed perfectly. And then one more small detail with this is a scrim. So when we, it's actually shadow, when we move this, there, there, a shadow overcomes the underlying screen, and we want to replicate that. So we're going to make a new layer between tweet details and the main page, we'll make it full screen. I'm going to make this black, so if I just type in here, three zeros, just like that, and I'm going to call this Tweet detail shadow. I'm going to turn its opacity off. Then I'll add two fade animations. This will be to make it fade in and out. So it's going to fade in when we do tap the tweet details button just up to 50%. We can leave it at 0.2, that's the, the perfect duration. And fade out, simple, when we go back, go to zero. And now if we look, that's exactly how Twitter's doing it. Okay, so now we can just check this, the scrolls, I don't want there to be a, uh, I don't want to be able to see this, this blank area. So here's what we'll do. We'll go back to tweet details on the details scroll. Let's change its color. And the background that Twitter uses for this, for their colors is RGB 245, oops, 248. And 250. There, so that'll reload. Open that. Now, if I scroll, that's the that's the color we want. And so this is the reason that we left the nav bar on top, rather than within the main page in the last tutorial. 
is because it doesn't move throughout uh, the majority of these, these interactions and for this entire uh, prototype that we're building. So when we go under here, it just stays and everything moves right beneath it. And the last thing that we're going to do in this prototype is make this profile photo expand and so that we can view the photo. So I'm going to put this within the main page. Let's see, I can minimize all of this. I don't need to see it, at least for now. I just don't like to have it open. So I'm going to put this above, I'm going to make this above the profile icons. I can put this uh, shadow, this detail shadow within the main page right here. And then when I'm gonna click on profile icons and then make a new layer so it's between these. And I'm gonna make this a full canvas sized layer. This is just a shell container. So I'll make it transparent. I'm gonna rename this to profile photo viewer. Now within it, I'm gonna put a couple assets. I'm gonna bring the close button in, place this roughly. And then I'm going to bring the uh, profile pick expanded and then the blurred background of our Twitter feed they set in here and come and make sure that these are within the container profile photo viewer put these all in here And then we can start to place these in the right spot. So the close X, we're gonna put that at 18 in and 20 pixels down. Profile pick expanded is gonna be centered horizontally and vertically. So it's gonna be at zero and uh, 146. So that's right in the center. And then photo blurred is, is in the, the back at just a top zero and zero. And I'm gonna make one more layer. This is gonna be the scrim that shows up on top of this blurred background. So let's make this, this is also gonna be a full, full canvas. And we'll make this black. We're going to leave this nav bar here. We'll tell it to disappear in a moment. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to do before we make this open and close, we're going to just set the, the, the properties and the, the uh, animations for when this is open, and then we'll set the transition to get it open. So in Twitter, when you do this, when it opens the photo, it expands up. But when you're in here, you're able to uh, tap and drag the photo up and down and as you do that the scrim behind it will scale or uh, fade in and out and so I want to be able to match that so first I'm going to add a drag animation to the photo this expanded photo view so we'll set that set it so that it's only vertical and this will allow me to have a free drag for it but be able to make animations that are based off of its drag and its drag position. And so now when I when I let go of this drag, I want to make sure that this can will bounce back to its spot. So I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna call this move to center. It's gonna be based off of the profile pick expansions drag release. Tell it I want to go back to zero just to make sure it stays in its spot and, one, and then top to 146. I'm going to use a spring animation with a tension of 150, so it's not too high. And so what this will allow me to do is once I, uh, if I drag it, it'll spring and pop back in its spot. Now I'm also going to do, this might seem a little uh, premature, but we're, the way that we're going to make this open is by tapping on the profile picture on the header. So. I'm going to add a fade animation because it's going to start invisible. I'm going to make this uh, a fade in. I'm going to add another one that's a fade out. And then I'm going to come back over here to tweets. I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to add a tap 
interaction to this so that I can make this work. That's so when I click on here. I'm going to tell this to fade in when I get to uh, when I tap on that picture. So on a profile picture timeline, when I tap on that, this will fade to 100. And currently, its opacity is at 100. We'll turn that down when we're done. I'm going to set this to zero, so it'll be instant, but a delay of 0.4 seconds. And then the fade out is going to be instantaneous. And then the fade out is going to happen when I uh, tap on this X, uh, but we'll, we'll set those a little bit later. We just need to make sure that this is in here so we remember to do it. Okay, so let's set this scrim to do its thing. I'm going to call this the, just going to name this scrim. And there's a couple things that I want to do. When you drag this photo, it actually fades out if you're going up and down. And you're also able to toss this up and tell it to fade out. And it's gonna fade out when we tap on this X, which we need to uh, make a button for. So first we'll just make this button just real quick. Make this visible, close button is what we'll call this, add a tap interaction. We'll come back to the scrim. I'm gonna add a fade animation. And this is gonna be uh, fade with drag. So if I click on Profile Pick Expanded and set it to uh, for its drag position, I'm going to say I want this to do continuously to final value. I'm going to measure this so that it's from its vertical center, which is currently at 334. I'm going to say if I move this up to about 300, uh, 300 pixels, so i will just say 34, that this is going to fade all the way down to 25%. Then I'm going to add a target so that I can do the other direction. It's 334 to 634. And this will also go to 25%. So now as I drag, it does its thing just like that. Cool. Now um, I need to tell this to complete. So if I Still, if I'm uh, dragging this thing, if I release, it doesn't register that it's still dragging. So I'm going to set a fade animation to this to tell it that with the drag release to go back up to 100%. So we'll just have this. We'll rename this to fade, drag, release. I'm going to say if this profile pick expanded, this drag is released. Go back up to 100 and we'll leave the duration as is. So now it still does this thing, but if I'm here and I let go, there we go. Okay, so now you're also able to, if you drag this photo and release it up here or down, this whole thing will close. So we're gonna set that up. So I'll click on the photo, and I'm going to add another move animation. I'm going to call this Toss. Now we're going to use some conditions for this. So I'm going to say, set it to uh, Profile Pick Expansion, based off its drag release. I need to get its layer ID. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to say, paste that ID. If it's, uh, if it's vertical center, dot .cy, is less than 100 when I let go of it. Move its bottom to negative 50. I'm going to use a spring animation with a tension of 500. I apologize for my phone recording here being weird. QuickTime does not, for some reason, really prefers to only record if you're moving the screen. It's odd. Then we add another condition to this. I'll paste that back in. Actually, what I can do is just copy this one up here. Let me paste this. Change the caret to the other direction. So if it's greater 
if I really say greater than 567, that's you know, pretty far down the screen, make its top go down to 717. So we're just adding, just telling it to go 50 pixels off so that it doesn't slowly move, it's going to move quickly. And we'll use the same easing curve here, spring 20 of 500. So now if I drag and release, it moves out. Oops. So I screwed this up. So <laughs> right here at this top one, I need to set this bottom to negative 50. That's what I want. I want the bottom to go to negative 50, not the top. So if I release it up here, it flies out. And then we're going to add uh, a fix to this. So if we toss this up and this closes and then we open it back up, it's going to be up at this position, which is not what we want. So we're going to add a, kind of a reset. So we'll just add another move animation, call this toss, reset. We're going to use the same conditions that we used for this. So we'll just copy. And we'll say if the this picture, uh, this uh, photo, if it's drag released, greater than this, we're going to move it back to 146. We're just, we can just use a linear, linear easing curve. It'll be instantly, but we're going to give it a 0.5 second lead time so we don't, we know that everything will be closed out and we don't have to see it happen. We'll copy the second condition, so the, the 567 one, paste it in here. Do the same thing, say 146, 0, 0.5. So now what we're saying is it's still going to toss out, but then once it's done with that, it'll reset and appear here. So this photo that we're looking at right here isn't going to be the one that, um, that moves up into the screen. We're going to use a, a, uh, a copy of this layer to do that. The reason for that is if you take a layer and scale it down and move it to a position and then tell it to scale up and move to another position, it tends to screw up your drag and it'll end up flying to a different part of the screen. So we're just to avoid that, we're going to cheat a little bit. Okay, so now we've got these fade in and fades out. So we've got the fade in. We made our close button. So let's make the fade out work. If we click on the close, or set this fade out to close buttons tap. Tell it to go to zero. We're gonna tell this one to go instantly because the the way that we're gonna make this viewer close is with this entire shell container, not the individual pieces. So now the close button moves and disappears based on your drags. It doesn't sit and hover the whole time. So let's set the move animations for those. I'm gonna click on the layer and I'm gonna add two move animations and two fade animations. I'm going to name this first one move out. Second one will be move in. And move out is based off of the profile picture expanded uh, drag start with duration to final value. And we're going to set its bottom to go to zero. I'm going to use a duration of point, 0 0.3 seconds for that. And then the move in is based off profile pick expanded's drag release. And we're going to tell it to go back to its position. It's uh, at 20, which we do need to set. I'm looking up here. It should be at 20. 18 pixels in and 20 pixels down. That's the right spot. So we're going to tell it to go back to 20. And we'll use that same duration, but we're going to add a delay of 0.3 seconds on this. And then we can do the fade. So when we, it doesn't just move in, um, it doesn't stay solid the whole time, it actually fades when it moves. It's made, like, name this first one, <laughs> fade out, and the second one, fade in. And this is based off profile pick expanded, drag start, delta fade to zero. We'll keep the duration the way it is and fade in. 
It's based off of profile thick expanded drag release. I'll bring it up to 100. We'll use the same duration, but just like the move in, we're going to set a 0.3 second delay. So now if I start to move and drag this, it goes away. When I let go, it moves back in. Just the way that we want that to work. So now let's set this photo view uh, container to open and close. So we didn't set the, the scrim to go away when we dragged uh, because we want the entire thing to disappear. So we're going to do that right now with this. We're just going to add three different fade animations. And what this is going to do is it's going to cover opening, uh, fading with the close button, and fading when we toss the photo out. So we'll name this first one fade in. Second one will be fade out close button. And then we'll name this third one fade out toss. So for fade in, this is when we tap on the profile pick timeline. Bring it up to 100. The duration is going to be 0.2 seconds. So we'll leave it the way it is. The fade out close button is based off of the <laughs> close buttons tap. Tell it to go to zero. And we're going to do a 0.3 second delay on this. But we'll leave the duration the same. And then the fade toss is going to be off of um, profile pick drag release. Click that profile pick expanded. Drag release. And we're going to use those same conditions that we did so that we don't uh, have this turn off when we drag at any, you know, any time. So we'll paste in these conditions. Now the, the numeric values we used were 100 and 567. So just to make sure those are in here, I'm going to add, add a condition and then I can edit these. So if it's greater than 100, we'll edit this first one. Now that's if you just have this copied to your clipboard, like I still did, but we're going to paste that entire, this entire string. We'll tell it to go to zero. We're going to add a 0.3 second delay. And then else, if we uh, release it when it's greater than 567, we'll fade to zero with a delay of 0.3 seconds. Now let's make sure that all of this is working. So this is all still working. Our X is working well. If I drag it, that fades out. Now if I reset this, make sure it works if I toss it up. Cool. And so now we also need to set this to open when we tap on this. Now we have it, we can make it close, we can interact with it. With it. Now we need to be able to make this open up from, uh, from the, the timeline view. So first I'm going to add a move animation to this. This is going to cover, in case we have, this is anywhere else on the screen, I'm going to call this this move open. Now we have, we did make a, a condition to make this move back before, but we need to have a, an open set for this, and this will also cover just in case any of those values don't work out. So we'll just um, say that this is based off of profile pick timelines tap. Going to move it to its position of 0 to the left and top of 146. Use a linear easing curve. The duration is going to be instant, but we're going to add a 0.4 second delay. This is going to account for the time it takes for our photo to um, expand up. So I can see if I've got that, this opens up and then that'll be in its, in the, in its position. So now we can set the opening sequence to enter this photo viewer. Uh, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to duplicate this photo here, put it onto the timeline, and then make our animations happen based off of that. Now, we're going to duplicate this. Now be very careful because I do this way more than I would like to admit. I will copy and for some reason the copy appears on top. If this is unlike in like Photoshop, the copy appears on top and uh, but you're still selected on the original. 
make sure that you have the copy selected, not the original one, because if you end up changing things about uh, accidentally with the original, it'll screw everything up. I actually just did that. I went through this, whole, recorded this whole process of opening and closing, and um, set all these interactions with the wrong copy. I would screwed everything up and I had to go through. So now, trying this again. Uh, so I've got the copy here. I'm going to just rename this right now to expander. And just to be safe, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to move this out of here. So the reason we're doing this is that um, just to make this simple, I'm going to have one single photo expand and then reset. Um, and then I'm going to have a separate photo be the uh, the photo that we can interact with in the viewer. Uh, because this, this photo that we're going to be tapping on involves scaling. And when you involve scaling, the positions kind of end up changing, as you'll see. And that can make drags. Uh, be confusing and so it's just easier if we just kind of work around that by having a small photo uh, that just moves in and does its thing and interact with a different photo. So we can delete all of the in uh, animations with this photo little one right here and then we'll come in here and let's turn the opacity of our interactable photo down because we have a fade in and fade out animation on it and then let's turn the photo viewers opacity down as well. So then we'll come back and click on this, the photo that expands, and I'm going to turn its scale down to 0.16. And then I'm going to move its position to negative 145 and negative 51. So what I, it was just what I was talking about. Even though this is small and obviously from here to here is not a 145 pixels or, or it's in here it's registering as negative 145 because it's still um, its properties are based off of its original size and not its scale size so what I want to do is add three different types of uh, animations to this I'm going to add a scale a move and a fade and what I'm going to do is this thing is going to be, uh, its opacity is going to be down, and this is just going to work as a cycle. So when I tap on the original photo that's here, uh, this guy up above, because uh, that's the one that has the, this open interaction, and that's the one we've done the animation with, um, this picture that's overlaying it is going to expand and then disappear and reset. So I'm going to turn the opacity down, I'm going to add a fade, a move, and a scale. And since we're working in a cycle, I'm going to also tell it to reset. So I'm going to add a scale, a move, and a fade. So for the first one, I'm going to call this fade in, call this move in, and then scale up. Fade in is going to be based off of when I click on the profile pick timeline, go up to 100. Its duration is going to be instant and no delay. But I am going to set a condition to this just to be safe. I'm going to take its layer ID. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to say dot opacity. I'm going to make sure that it only opens if its opacity is currently at zero. This is just going to make sure that none of this um, that this won't won't be uh, be able to get like hacked around or accidentally tapped in, in any way. Since for the move in, I'm gonna say this is based off the timeline. Profile views tap. I can move this up to zero. It's left to zero and negative one forty six. We're gonna leave the linear easing curve with a 0.2 second duration. That's fine. And then it's gonna scale. This is also based off of the timeline view uh, photos tap. So to scale up to one, and the duration of this is going to be 0.3 seconds. And we're going to leave this center anchor point. So now if I tap, it expands up, but it's still here. So it's still interactable and draggable. I should actually delete this drag right here. Let's delete that interaction. Uh, but it's still in its position and I can't interact with anything behind it. 
So I need to make it go away. So once that's done, we call this scale, scale down, rename this to move out, and fade out. So this is also based off the timeline. We're just going to push one button and make it cycle. This is just scaled down back to 0.16 in size. The duration is going to be instant, but I'm going to add a 0.4 second delay. And we're going to use the 0.4 second delay for all this. Minimize that. Move out, also based on the timeline. Let's tap. Move it back to its current position of negative 144. Sorry, 145. At some point, I'd move this. So negative 145 and negative 51. No duration, 0.4 second delay. And then fade out when I hit this timeline to zero. Instant, 0.4 second delay. So now we're just running through a cycle of moves and animations. And as soon as it's open, it'll instantly close and I can then interact with my photo. So we open that, it does its thing. Now I can move, I'm actually dragging a different photo now, but you couldn't tell. Whoop, when it's out, that resets and I can go through the cycle. Cool. And then there's just one small detail. We need to get rid of this nav bar because that shouldn't be there. So come back over to here. I'm gonna add three different fade animations to it. So we wanna make sure that it fades uh, when I open the picture, fades back in when I close it by hitting the X, and also fades back in when I toss that photo out of there. So we'll do three. Lean this first one, fade out, pick, open. Second one, fade in, pick, close. Third one, fade in, pick, toss. I don't like that, okay. So we need to match the duration of this photo viewer opening. So we'll say that when, the, uh, when this timeline is picked, or picture is tapped, tells us to go to zero, we'll leave the 0 0.2 second duration for this. And it'll fade out looks like it's fading normally. So then we'll just bring this back in. So when the close button is tapped, bring it to 100, and then like we had set before, 0.2 second dura uh, duration with a 0.3 second delay. Minimize that. And then for the pick toss, we're gonna have to use the conditions that we had set before, so we'll set that the, the profile pick expanded drag release, let's come back into here, let's grab those, that's the wrong container, okay, so this uh, fade out toss, we're going to use these same conditions, so I'll just copy this one right here, I just paste this right here, add another one, so it's these conditions that are saying if we're Less than 100 or greater than 567. These are our, our toss conditions. Just paste those. We'll tell it to come back up to 100 with a delay of 0.3 seconds. So let's let that reload. And now, once we've got that, that's opened. This works the way we want it to work. Toss that. It should be fading back into 100. Nope. There we go. <laughs> Let's try this again. There. Now it's back. Cool. So like I had said, the, the photo viewer, it seems fairly simple, but there's actually quite a lot going on. Uh, but it's cool. It's, a, it's an interesting viewer. It works well. And overall, it, it, I think it really fits in with the design of Twitter itself. So that's all for our uh, prototype build of Twitter. It was a, a complex uh, thing to build. 
It doesn't take too terribly long to do, and is actually really fun to figure out how to build this and, and do it. I hope that you guys had fun building this with me. So until next time, thanks for watching.